I think I'm going to turn the camera off and slowly die. Be back in a bit. This project here, this is going to be my third go at uh, making a sword. My uh, first uh, go is uh, currently uh, probably 80% buried in my uh, pepper patch. I just had the handle sticking out. It was not a uh, success. Um, I think I've got uh, what that looks like as part of my uh, introduction. And then here is my uh, second attempt. This is also part of my introduction, and I believe this was the very first video that I uh, made um, and uh, posted to uh, YouTube uh, with uh, Freeman Metal uh, Works. I'm trying to get this thing in in frame here. Yeah, that's good enough. And uh, while it was successful. <clears throat> in so much as it was a successful cast of the uh, blank that I had, that I had 3D printed. This is in no way, shape, or form, at least I don't believe so, a uh, uh, authentic, genuine, um, Bronze Age uh, sword. Um, it is just massively heavy, and this is made out of uh, aluminum, so uh, this thing made out of bronze uh, would have been just uh, too heavy. Now there's things I need to do in order to finish it. In fact I was uh, intending on making this a, uh, not this video, but making a finished video as I've got uh, a divot there and a divot there that I was planning on, still planning on, uh, filling in with uh, uh, Bondo or something and then uh, I will uh, wrap this with some sort of wrap, probably a black one. Uh, and then uh, <clears throat> clean up the uh, sword. There's uh, still some jaggy parts from the real rough uh, finish that I did on this. Uh, wasn't uh, a full on uh, attempt. Uh, and then here's another thing, and this is a problem and why it was a successful cast of my blank, but it was not a successful uh, sword. And, should be able to see this bend that takes place right in here uh, and such. And I've even thought, given how thick this thing is, if I could find somebody who's a machinist, I might actually be able to uh, see if they can machine this thing uh, down uh, straight. Even so, <clears throat> this is not uh, what I would call a Bronze Age uh, sword not the way that they would have made them back in the day not if the uh, museum pieces of existing uh, swords uh, are any indication and not if the uh, videos I've seen that actually make reproduction Bronze Age swords that uh, this is far far too thick okay uh, I still like this one uh, and uh, I, I went ahead and made this even though I knew it wasn't authentic because this is made out of 100% recycled uh, cans, aluminum cans. And that was something that I wanted to uh, show my uh, students. Of course, I was not, I did not show them the actual sword. Uh, that would be in violation of uh, several uh, school uh, policies. Uh, but I took uh, a number of uh, pictures and then uh, showed them. Uh, this actually has a name, the sword Scopedia, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Scopedia. 
which is uh, Greek for trash, uh, because uh, not only did I make this all out of uh, aluminum cans, but these were all aluminum cans that I found on the road. So some of them had been sitting out in nature uh, for a while. So anyway, that was my what I would consider my first uh, relatively successful cast of a sword, and uh, <clears throat> because I was so concerned with how this thing was going to turn out and and not nearly so confident in my casting skills that the only thing that uh, I uh, showed that I captured on video was the uh, unveiling and then I plunged it in a uh, snowbank. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> here's uh, attempt number three. And this one I'm actually trying to uh, do for real. Now, I think I've got some footage uh, out there of what I was hoping to do, because I was actually hoping to do this uh, over the uh, summertime and have this ready to go before school started so that uh, when I started my social studies class uh, again for this year, I would have uh, <coughs> some pictures of a uh, Bronze Age <coughs> sword since we're doing uh, ancient uh, civilizations. Uh, I had this thing 3D printed. I've got one, two, three, four, five different uh, sections and I thought I'll just super glue them together and uh, this is what happened uh, when I did uh, they kind of stuck to the paper and not all of them super glued very very well okay they were at one point all attached uh, but the problem uh, is that uh, uh, when I held it on edge had the same problem as I did with uh, uh, my second uh, one, Scopedia over there, and that is it had a bend in it. And so I thought, all right, what I need to do is separate these and uh, keep them in their segments so that it will lay flat uh, in the uh, flask when I put sand on them. Uh, now, the thing that I was most concerned about is these uh, seams. Uh, because uh, originally I'd uh, glued this together and uh, put all those uh, and then tried, tried to uh, fill and, and take care of the seams uh, and everything like that because it is uh, hit with a uh, sandable uh, primer. But uh, it didn't, it didn't uh, glue up uh, well. So I'm keeping it separate and I think what I'm going to be able to do uh, and... Uh, We'll see if it happens in the video. Uh, I think what I'll be able to do is, uh, in the mold itself, is uh, uh, smooth out those uh, seam lines. And I think I'll be uh, okay uh, there. Uh, it's uh, beveled. It's got a draft uh, all the way uh, around so that this should come cleanly out of the sand uh, with the expectation then when I've got my piece of metal then I can uh, take care of it uh, with the uh, finish work. Okay, so this is the original uh, intent. Now, eventually, I'm going to do this in uh, bronze, but that's not going to happen today. There's something I want to do in the meantime. First of all, just to see if it's going to work. So I'm going to uh, do this in aluminum, just like I did Scopedia, although... Uh, uh, I'm going to do a couple things different, and an idea came to mind, and uh, that idea probably won't show up uh, until the end. I made a modification of the uh, handle, so here's the original handle, and uh, I actually preferred that uh, there was a bit more of a guard than what the original had, and then I've got this extra chunk here. Uh, but I'm going to kind of leave that as a bit of a surprise because uh, if you uh, look at the way swords are manufactured uh, This portion here uh, the pommel uh, actually uh, is a counterbalance to the uh, rest of the uh, Sword and I've got something planned uh, for this one, but I want to do it all in aluminum and then uh, if all of this uh, works out then I will uh, try to make uh, a more authentic one. So this is what I'm going to be casting today, right there. 
and uh, get my sand uh, going here in a bit. Um, that uh, I'll just have a simple uh, runner and a simple gate, and uh, this worked just fine uh, when I made Scopedia, and I've since made a uh, 3D printed uh, gate. I've uh, uh, in the past just carved it, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, use that, uh, and that should that should work. All right, I'll do a few final touches, and uh, then I'll go ahead and start uh, ramming up some sand. All right, if I was reading the uh, GoPro correctly, that took about 15 minutes. I forgot how much more work filling this flask with sand uh, is. I haven't uh, done a volume thing, but it just seems to take more work, which is probably why this is only my third go around at uh, making a uh, sword. All right, I'm going to uh, take a quick uh, break here, uh, drink some water, probably... Uh, smash up, pulverize some PC boards uh, and such, and then uh, get back to uh, taking care of the second half. Turnover worked pretty good. Certainly, what happened there though? <clears throat> That's gonna matter, but let's just clean that off anyway. Okay, I think this is still gonna go down flat when I put. Well, it's gonna that's gonna should all fall out quite nicely uh, <clears throat> I think it'll still be flat and then hopefully that means straight when I get this done goodness <sighs> heavy all right I gotta break out there uh, I'm not gonna be surprised if there isn't a certain amount of flash and cleanup with this That's okay. There could be some concern there, but that's gonna get taken care of, I think, too, when I uh, uh, do what I'm gonna do uh, there. 
<clears throat> All right, now I'm going to put this thing uh, together. And uh, you're going to see once again that I am not a master carpenter when it comes to building flasks. This thing is so wonky. I've got it shimmed up in a couple of places. <clears throat> it still works because Scopedia happened. And make certain I got, got it going the right way. And I think I do. Okay. Now all I've got to do is ram that up. All right, that <clears throat> second half is all rammed up. Unlike Scopedia, I am significantly more confident in this uh, turning out than I was with with uh, that second attempt uh, with a sword because unlike what I just rammed up here, what I just packed in sand, it's flat, whereas uh, Scopedia was uh, not flat. It didn't have any flat surfaces. And the way it was 3D printed, it was not 3D printed the way you often see swords 3D printed and then uh, cast where they actually have uh, two flat sides. And they lay one flat side down just like uh, you do with a number of uh, objects. As I was saying before my camera clicked off, uh, Unlike uh, the way swords are often seen being cast on YouTube, they're, uh, they, they're the two halves where you've got a flat side and then you put the second half on top and then uh, ram uh, the second half of the flask. Uh, whereas Scopedia was uh, a solid object, so I had to uh, come down uh, and scrape uh, sand to the uh, uh, midline, the center line. And which meant then when I put the two halves uh, together there was uh, always a bit of concern as to whether or not I had the two halves exactly one on top uh, of the uh, other. So Scopedia was a much trickier uh, mold to make uh, than uh, this one is going to be. So I'll get all this stuff kind of cleaned up here and then uh, we'll get to uh, uh, taking the uh, blank out and uh, making a sprue and a vent and cutting a basin.
I was originally thinking I was going to be able to just take this part, flip it over, have that stuff fall out. But I got a big chunk of sand right here. So I don't want to do that. Uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and work my way down. I'll start here, pull this out, and then pull each section out uh, this way. I did not put screw holes in uh, any of this, and now I'm kind of wishing I had, because then it would have been a piece of cake to take those parts out. But again, I'm not too concerned. It just means potentially more flashing. This part I know should come out nice and clean. This part should come out nice and clean. Start messing stuff up. <clears throat> okay, maybe I can use those seams to my advantage. Oh yeah. I need just a smidgen longer fingernails. I'll do it like that. Okay, so here's one of those seams I was talking about. I'm gonna need to smooth that out. And then if I remember right, these three chunks are all one piece, kinda. All right. Not too bad, not too bad. I am not concerned about how much flash there may be in this. Not concerned at all. rather than a divot. So, with this spoon, I can kind of smooth things out. Maybe. I think so. just don't want to be a protrusion so that there's a, a divot. I don't mind a lump. I'm certain I got a tip there though. All right, I think that'll work. Not too worried about the turbulence coming in there. All right, I think that's good. 
Now I think instead of picking this up and moving it out of the way like I typically do, I will uh, just turn the other one over, do the same thing, and I'll just move the camera. Okay, now I didn't even think about this, but I should have, but I think I can smooth that out. Well, actually it'll be a lump, so maybe I, I'll leave it alone. But uh, <clears throat> when I tried to glue this together, I was gluing this on top of newspaper so I wouldn't glue it to the top of my table. And uh, there were pieces of the newspaper that uh, stuck. And I'll grab that and show show the camera. And it looks like the sand picked up that detail, unfortunately. Here's the, there's the, right there and right there. And you can see it there and there. But I can smooth that out a bit too. Although I just think it would make a lump there. I do want to get rid of this though. That seam and this seam. And certainly the seam around the lump. Maybe I can smooth it out some. Alright, so I'll want to take care of that if I decide that I'm going to make another one of these. I don't think I need to be too concerned with hydraulic pressure with this, but I'm going to do my conventional stuff. Yeah, and that. Uh, I hope I don't have a break. Although I would have thought that sand felt like it was plenty wet. Although the fact that there was a big chunk that broke off, I don't know. truth. Oh, gee. Yeah, dang it. Look at that. I absolutely do not feel that when I was packing all of this. That's kind of what it's going to look like there. Well, I've, uh, had successful casts despite that problem. <clears throat> Just hope I can get this on without any mishaps. Yeah, and hopefully the camera isn't too much in the way. Let's scoop that up first.
where I can feel where things are. My hip, ouch, that hurt. There we go. And that's why I was concerned with Scopedia getting those two halves together. I think it's still going to be okay. Ooh, felt something in the left hip. Oh, I know I was not holding that the way I should have. Ah, I think I'm going to turn the camera off and slowly die. Be back in a bit. All right, there's a couple things I uh, lifted up on this end and I could feel sand move from underneath, so this one may not work out after all. Because if that sand in the bottom fell, it should just make for a thicker sword with tons of flash. I don't know, I got a bad feeling now. But anyway, uh, the reason why I turned this on, and what I want to do in focusing on this spot, is that I want to make the pour basin still. Okay, and so I'm going to build up some sand here to separate these two halves. I'll pour in this one and then watch it fill on the other side. Or at least I hope it will. So I'll build up some sand here in a moment. Smooth this out. Okay. Make a wall right along there. That should work. All right, let's get this furnace going. See if I messed up a big time. Okay, the reason why I uh, gave that end a lift is that uh, it was uh, another channel and I cannot remember who had recommended it. And I can't, it had to have been when I made Scopedia or I made some comment somewhere, they suggested, because they'd seen it on another channel, uh, lifting up, giving a slight angle, uh, letting gravity do some work. Uh, I should have just went with what I did before, because uh, I have successfully cast. I should have just went with that same technique. Never occurred to me that uh, some of the sand from the bottom would fall when I lifted it up. But anyway, let's fire up the furnace and uh, get this thing going. I think my number three should do the job, but part of me also thinks I should use my number six just to be on the safe side. I'll think about that as I'm unpacking the furnace and getting it ready. <laughs>
All right, if I did the math correctly, my number three should be enough. And the other thing, I'm looking to see if this is gonna leak out the bottom because of the broken. Oh, so far so good. Keep pouring, keep pouring. Okay, didn't hear any leaks. Definitely, the number three was enough. Get some extra. A bunch of little ingots. It's too bad. My ingot mold thing didn't work. All right, I wanted to get the furnace taken care of before I chatted more on this. I didn't hear any leaks or sizzles, so I think the mold may have stayed uh, together enough. And uh, I poured a whole bunch, and uh, that uh, that uh, seemed to, uh, I think it filled. I think it filled. All right, uh, so I did some quick math to ensure that the, the number three was gonna work. I took the widest part of uh, my uh, master, which I think, if I remember right, was three inches, multiplied it by the length, which I think was 26 inches, and then uh, multiplied it by a quarter of an inch, converted it to milliliters, and then uh, found out uh, how many milliliters were in three pounds of uh, aluminum, and uh, I had more than enough uh, leeway, as we can see, with the uh, four muffin tins I just filled. All right, I'm gonna let this thing cool for a while and, uh, and then we'll do uh, an unmolding. Here's that uh, first attempt uh, in with a couple of uh, dead uh, froze pepper plants that I did not get taken care of before the first killing frost, but there's the first attempt at making a sword in the snow. All right, let's give this a go. <clears throat> if the hip will take it. Oh, heavens. <clears throat> Ooh, so far so good. Uh, yes, baby, yes. Yes, baby, yes. Yes, baby, yes. Okay, I do have some snow. Let's see if we can snowbank this one like I did Scopedia Good enough, good enough. <laughs> Sizzle time, everyone.
<clears throat> Here's the part that I'm most interested in. It looks decently straight. It looks decently straight. Nice. Nice. decently straight. I'm calling that a success. Nice. All right, still has some finish work to do though. That's uh, only part way uh, finished. <clears throat> Although I may recast, not recast, reprint that handle because I like that uh, thicker hilt there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. Uh, I got to set up my uh, parting shot here because uh, I think I'll do the finish work uh, separate from the uh, from this cast here and uh, do that in it. It may be a couple of different uh, videos to finish this thing off. We'll see. All right. Thanks a whole bunch for watching. Please like and subscribe, and uh, as always, blessings, many, many blessings. God bless.